Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, the paper that I'm presenting is on infrastructure development of local and uh, regional capabilities in South Africa and in Mozambique. So the paper draws from a long study that uh, was done by the Center for Competition, Regulation and Economic Development. So it draws heavily on that paper. So I will present part of the findings from that research. So basically, I'm going to give you a background of the study, then the research questions that we tried to answer, then the structure of the Mozambican construction sector, and also an analysis of the procurement rules. Procurement is very, very important in terms of identifying key participants in construction-related projects. So it's actually an important factor that we analyzed. Then I will talk about the key findings from a local perspective, that is Mozambican construction firms' response to rail infrastructure investment. But I would say from, from the study, we shall see it, uh, the findings that there hasn't been much uh, local participation of Mozambican firms. Then we are also going to look at the winners for the Nakala and Senaline rail project. So this is the case study that we looked at. We, we focused on the Nakala and Sena rail line because it's linked to uh, mining, coal mining that, that is happening in Mozambique. For some of you, we have heard about it. There is massive coal mining in Mozambique which is being exported to, 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 to many countries, including China. Then we we'll also look at uh, the regional response to Mozambican infrastructure de uh, demands. Uh, that is, we, we focus mainly on South Africa. How South Africa has re responded to, to the infrastructure demand in Mozambique. Then we have got some recommendations. So we, for the study, we interviewed uh, 27 uh, companies that include uh, construction, civil engineering firms, and consulting engineering firms, and also raw material uh, providers like sleeper, manufacturers, um, and signal equipment suppliers. So they were also included in the 27, which we, we, we interviewed in Mozambique and in South Africa. We also interviewed about six institutions, uh, mainly government departments uh, and clients, which include uh, major mining houses. Uh, Valley was the main uh, investor in Mozambique, so we interviewed it. Then that's the one client that we interviewed. Then why did we choose uh, Moatiz? So Moatiz uh, actually has core deposit. Coal deposits in, 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 in Moatize are the largest known but not yet exploited reserves in the world. So the exploitation of these reserves has been dependent on investment in Sena Railway line, which links uh, Beira, and also the Nakala line from Malawi to the port of Nakala. So these big investments, like Sena line and Nakara line, they all about contributed about over two, 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 two billion in terms of uh, the amount of investment that was made by the World Bank and uh, Vale, which is the key uh, mining firm in Mozambique. So total of FDI in Nakala project was actually equivalent to 35% of Mozambique GDP, which actually shows that uh, these are big investments where local and regional capabilities can actually be built along uh, these investments. And so the study now aim, aimed to understand whether these investments are organized as part of an enclave development or as a part of uh, developing a diversified local and regional capabilities. And this view is also comes out in the uh, AU, the mining vision policy, where uh, they are thinking around uh, developing uh, corridors and regional capabilities around uh, infrastructure projects. So the research questions that we, we, we tried to answer was what drives winning a contract? What really drives winning a contract in Mozambique? And to what extent are local 
uh, local, meaning Mozambique, and regional, meaning South Africa, linkage is being built given the competitive and procurement dynamics that exist in Mozambique. Then what are the challenges to local and regional linkages given competitive and procurement dynamics? So these are the main questions that we, that we, we answered in our paper. So giving you a bit of a background, the structure of the Mozambican construction sector. So this table, the table here shows um, the structure of the Mozambican construction sector. But what we see from this table is that Mozambique categorized its, its construction into its construction firms into seven grades. And this actually depends on the kind of projects that they are able to they are able to, 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 to carry. So what we see here is that majority of firms in Mozambique, local, local Mozambican firms are actually in grade three. So we here in this grade three, we find firms that are capable of building like houses. So they don't fit into the big projects which we are talking about here. And grade seven is where we find the big firms that are capable of building like railway lines, the, the one where we, we, we looked at the center line and Nakala line. So that's where we find the biggest firms. But what is important to, 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 to observe from number seven here, where we find big firms, majority of these firms are foreign firms. So these are firms uh, from South Africa, like uh, Marin Roberts, those big, big firms. And we only have a couple of Mozambican firms. And those firms that we find are actually uh, not as big as they are in terms of financial debt. So they are then, they are classified as, as, as grade seven, but they are not actually, they actually don't have the capabilities to undertake some of these big projects. So now, if you look at the, the table here, shows the winners for the Nakala and Sena line. So the first part is for, is for, for the Nakala line. Then this part is for for the center line. What we actually see here is that we have a couple of South African firms there, which are in red, uh, civil construction, civil construction firms, and we also have uh, consulting engineering firms here, uh, SRK and Wally Persons, and we have Green Road, which was actually subcontracted to do work in center line. But what is also important to note from this table is that yeah, if you look at the consulting engineering firms, these are the guys who do the feasibility studies. Like if they want to construct a rail track from point A to point B, they undertake some feasibility studies to see if it's possible to lay a track. So what we have discovered is that majority of South African engineering, consulting engineering firms were acquired by multinational uh, big consulting engineering firms and they are using that strategy to enter into the African continent. So that's why we see uh, consulting engineering firms like SRK yeah, going to do work in countries like Mozambique. But what is also important to note is that we don't see any Mozambican firm in this list. So that actually explains um, the lack of capabilities uh, on the part of Mozambican firms. So we analyze the procurement rules, like as, as I've said in my, my, my introduction, that procurement, uh, procurement becomes very important uh, when selecting clients uh, in the construction uh, sector. So we, 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 we analyzed uh, government procurement rules. Government partnered with uh, VAO, which is actually one of the biggest mining companies in Mozambique. So they partnered uh, with CFM, which is part of government, it's a railway regulator. Then World Bank and European Investment Bank, they also funded uh, the Sena line, the rehabilitation of Sena line. So we analyzed those procurement dynamics. And what we, we, found, we found is that uh, in, in, uh, for government procurement policy, we realized that price and quality are given more weight in the evaluation process. And the, it also, takes into account uh, local participation, but there's lack of enforcement of preference margin given to 
as a result of limited uh, external funding. Then the World Bank, what we see from their procurement policies is that they have inherent uh, selection and participation bias. And this participation bias comes from global uh, uh, and private tender system that are advertised internationally. So they have to advertise the tenders internationally and that brings in big multinational companies uh, with uh, b uh, a huge track record with massive experience, which Mozambican firms don't have. Then for Vale and uh, CFM, uh, Vale actually categorizes its procurement into local, national, and global. And for the local, that is for purchases from firms that are 51% owned by uh, local citizens. Those are Mozambican firms. And what we saw is that these are the services that they acquire from local Mozambican firms are cleaning services uh, and maintenance services. Then national, their national uh, uh, procurement they purchase, it's, it's actually for purchase of goods and services made from locally registered firms. So these are firms that are registered in Mozambique and they are not necessarily uh, Mozambique, Mozambican owned companies. They are just registered, any firm that is registered in Mozambique qualifies under the national. Then the global purchase, the global procurement is done internationally. They advertise the tenders international uh, newspapers, but what we also found is that increasingly they use a, a number of firms that are on their vendor list, they have a list of a vending lists, and these are firms that the valleys actually worked with, mainly from Brazil. Then the response now of Mozambican uh, construction firms to rail infrastructure. So what we found is that there's no localization of Mozambican rail infrastructure construction value chain. They, because of the multinational participation bias and selection uh, biases, which actually is not is more of a, is not a function of uh, price competitiveness, but it's more is more to do with long track, track record, financial depth, and size of the project. So although we have uh, Mozambican firms that are in grade seven, in grade seven, they don't have the financial depth to undertake to undertake these projects, and also. Mozambican firms uh, were facing operating challenges such as chronic shortages and high price of key inputs like cement and machinery and equipment. So it was one of the biggest challenges. And this is further uh, worsened by the fact that in Mozambique, there is a queuing system because of uh, lack of availability of majority of raw materials. So they require uh, big clients to be saved first who are working on big projects. Then in terms of regional response to Mozambican infrastructure demands, what we see is that there is some regionalization which is taking place. From the table that I showed you, we, we saw a couple of South African firms being involved there. And what these firms have been using are consulting engineering firms as the main gateway of entry into second tier South African, for South African civil engineering firms. So they are using this strategy whereby when consulting engineering firms are approached by a client, they come up with feasibility studies. And the client also requires that they come up with an estimate of the costs. So when they, uh, they, when they produce the estimate of the cost, they have to interact with civil engineering firms. They ask about how much does it cost to construct a railway line from point A to point B. When they get that information, they are also giving them information about potential projects. So this is how they've managed to get into Mozambique. And they also have an influence in terms of deciding uh, on, the, on the companies to undertake the project since they know the companies that they have worked with. Then we also found out that there's actually a South African diversified group which opened a 120 million concrete production plant in February 2014. So that plant is actually employing about 75 locals and there's one expert from South Africa. But what we see is that uh, there's competition in the Mozambican construction sector. Competition comes from uh, Chinese firms that uses finance. So these firms don't even go for tendering. They go to Mozambique with finance. They approach government with what they call unsolicited bids 
they go there with finance, they offer government that to, we are going to construct a railway line and provide everything, then the government will say, yes, you can do the work. So they don't have to go through all these procurement uh, uh, pol policies. We also have a group of Portuguese firms that use uh, language and cultural ties, which is also a barrier in Mozambique where uh, they speak Portuguese, so there are cultural ties there. Then I'll just skip and move on to the recommendations. My time is, is up. So as part of our recommendations, there is need for a sector-specific industrial policy in Mozambique. What we observed is also that there is no a strategy for construction in Mozambique. And this is a, is a result of a lack of capacity in government even to come up with a policy uh, to support the development of construction sector in, in Mozambique. And there's also a scope for joint partnership that could be mutually beneficial in building Mozambican capabilities, including partnerships with South African domiciled firms. That is, uh, those South African firms that won uh, parts of, of constructing the, the, the railway line can actually partner with the Mozambican firms. Then there's also need for regional development financing to develop a regional local partnership in the construction sector. So uh, South African firms can actually uh, use this development finance and use the Chinese model of approaching government with, uh, with finance. Then the high prices of of key inputs also reflects possibilities for developing uh, capabilities. And also the issues, there were issues that were raised around delays at borders. Since Mozambique doesn't have sufficient uh, raw materials, there were also delays around borders. So there's need to reduce delays at border, at border posts. Thank you very much.